Let me just take this opportunity and just say, welcome. It's good to see some people I ain't seen in a while, and and uh, man, it's always it's always I don't know. I say this, and it just sounds so cliche at times, but it's just so wonderful to come and be here with you guys. I mean, I know that. Uh, you know, we're in a firework stand, and, and it's kind of interesting because, uh, you know, there's been improvements over the years to this place. Before, you know, we didn't have foam on the walls, and it was, you know, during the summer, it just got extremely hot in here, and then during the winter, it got extremely cold, and just, it's just all that set aside, what makes this place awesome is y'all. So, <laughs> it's always good. By the way, did you notice our little addition over here? We we kind of teed this off yesterday, and and we're going to get some grills for that too. But uh, yeah, it, it 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 made that blast of energy and 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 air conditioner come out a lot more silent now. It's uh, definitely a lot more quieter in here. So uh, thank you to the guys that showed up yesterday to get that done. Um, other than that, let's get started. So. We are starting a, another three-week series. We, we just got out of one, and then we had a chili cook-off last week, and we're going to be doing another three-week series, and it's going to be a little bit interesting because next week, uh, our family, we're taking a family vacation, and uh, we're going to go chill in, at, at Lake Ozark. And it's something that I, I planned ahead, and I, you know, I've never had to do this before, but our son is now in school, so I put in like way in advance for us to have off during the spring break week, and so we're taking uh, our family, and we're going to go hang out on the lake a little bit, but over the next couple of weeks, um, the series is going to be kind of added to by Mark and by Chaz. And so we're going to try to all kind of expand on this idea of the proof of life. And so I want to give you a couple of, a little bit of boundaries that we're going to be in over the next several weeks. Um, what is the overall goal of a true follower of Christ? Um, I always like to make the distinction, and if you've ever heard me for an extended period of time, I try to make distinction of people that just believe because it, in, the, in Scripture, it says even the demons believe, okay? So I try to make a distinction between those that just believe and those that are true followers of Christ. Anytime Christ uh, approach somebody, he always asks them to follow him. And so those that follow him go out of their way to understand what he says and do and, and, and apply it to their life. And so what are the, the what is the overall goal of a true follower of Christ? This is going to be like today, I'm going to try to get a general overall. And then over the next couple of weeks, what does it look like? What does this look like in real life? Like what are some of the things that, that we might experience in real life that we will need this? To apply to our life but then the last week how do we keep doing this through the struggles of life and so we learn today even through the songs that we will struggle but how do we how do we as how do we be true followers through the through the deepest and darkest moments of some of the things that we experience in life and so that's kind of where we're going the next couple of weeks this came from a, a text at the beginning of the week i like to give you some behind the scenes things at times because you might think that I'm super organized and I'm not all the time. So I like to give you a little bit of a little bit of behind the scenes. At the beginning of the week, I text Mark and Chaz, and I'm like, "Hey, you know, uh, y'all have anything on your heart? So uh, your, you know, an idea of where you want to go over the next couple of weeks? Since y'all are going to be kind of leading the service." And uh, Mark replied, "Chaz didn't, but uh, <laughs> so <laughs> Chaz hates group text. Okay, and I do too." Okay, but apparently after the third uh, alert, he just kind of wrote off the, the message. But uh, the, anyway, so Mark kind of replied like some of the things that he's that for this year, some of the things he's been dealing with is that uh, what does it mean to be a true, com truly committed to following Christ and through through the things in your life? What does that look like? How how much are we willing to to give in to sin? and so on. And so that was something that Mark replied back. So I kind of themed this around that, okay? So let's start off today, and, and I'm going to be asking a lot of questions, okay? I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to ask you a, a ton of questions to get you to think about the way our society operates and about the way that we ought to operate as 
true followers of Christ. And so these questions are designed to, to get you to kind of ponder and to think a little bit. Um, and then they, they will, you, you, you'll see they will tie into Scripture quite a lot. So uh, what is the evidence? We say, we claim that we live in, in, in a free society, right? It's, it's freedom. People have died for this freedom. We say that we are free as Americans. But what is the evidence of a free society? Okay? And I'm not asking for you to shout anything out or anything like that. I just want you to ponder some of these things. If, if we live in a free society, what's the evidence of that? Okay? There are obviously laws in a free society, if that's what we claim we live in. Does laws make us less free? Do they build on that freedom? There are people that go around and enforce the laws. So there's not only laws, but then there's a structure to enforcing those laws. Does that make us less free? Does it affect our freedom? And on the other side of that, there are consequences for breaking the laws. Does that affect our freedom? If we live in a free society, I just pointed out three things that wanted, I wanted to make you think about your freedom. There's laws, there's people that enforce those laws, and there's consequences for breaking those laws. How much does that play into our freedom? Would, would a free society be a group of people that live their own life in fear of the laws? Would it be a society of people who lived according to laws? Would it be a society of people who understand that there are laws and that they're necessary and choose not to break the laws? It's interesting how when we think of freedom, we almost think of the opposite. Freedom from laws. So, I've got a personal story about my encounter with a law enforcement officer this week. I mean, I'm driving my big old van full of coffee. And I'm pulling into the back of one of the stores, and lo and behold, I've got lights behind me. And I'm looking, and I'm thinking, what the heck, you know? I mean, I just, I knew that I just kind of did a rolling stop through a stop sign. I was like, oh, man, you know, like, what is this guy going to get me on? And so he approaches my van. How you doing, sir? I'm doing well. I got my hands on the front. You know, I'm trying to make sure that, you know, you cover all your bases there, the windows down, the hands where they can clearly see. And by the way, regardless of your white or black, you should do that, okay? Put your hands where the police officer can see. It doesn't, mean, it doesn't matter who you are. That's just a sign of respect, and it lets them be at ease. So I'm doing And he comes up, and he says, uh, yeah, um, I'm writing you a ticket for no seatbelt. And I'm like, oh, man, I didn't even realize it, you know, because sometimes when you're in a big vehicle, you don't really. And sure enough, man, he went back there, he came over, and he wrote me a ticket for no seatbelt. And then the next thing you know, within a week, I'm getting lawyers' letters in the mail from, you know, to fight the thing and everything else. And, and I will, by the way. <laughs> but it's, it's interesting. You can do that, by the way, if you don't know that. You can, you can pay some cheap lawyers, like 50 bucks or something like that, and they'll go and show up for you, and they'll fight it and basically get it dismissed. And... Anyway, that's a side point. But uh, so I was just reminded this week that that in my own while I was at work that there there's I was just reminded that there's still laws out there that we are we have to abide by. So what about the laws? Like like for instance, on the freeway. Okay, what is the speed limit on the freeway? Wow. I can, I can see that that's up for interpretation then. <laughs> the, the speed limit on the freeway is 65. Now, 
That's what the sign says. Why do so many people ignore that? It's just, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, obviously, like if you're on the freeway, ain't nobody doing 65, okay? That was good grammar. <laughs> Nobody's doing 65, man. I mean, I'm in the second to the fast lane and people passing me up like I'm crawling sometimes and, and I'm, I think I've got a metal foot, but why, are so, why do so many people ignore that though? It's clearly a law. It's clearly stated. It's clearly posted, okay? What about murder? And, and why do... Why do so many people actually follow that law? Look, I know there are people that break it, but when you break it down statistically, most people recognize that's a law and don't do it. Okay? What's the difference between the 65 law and the murder law? There's a, there's a, there's a huge penalty attached to one of them, and there's not so much a penalty attached to the other one. But are they both the law? They're both the law. Which is what I want to kind of get you to think about. Is it because there's a harder punishment to murder versus breaking the speed limit? Is it because we just understand that murder's wrong and doing 85 isn't? <laughs> I, I'm really, I'm just trying to get you to think, okay? Because what we do, it is human nature to take the laws and then decide, hmm. That one's okay to break. I could probably get away with skirting around that one. But this one over here, I'm not negotiating that one. Okay? And so, what about when it comes to your faith? Is there a set of laws that you should be living by? Is there laws that are less important than others? If so, what does that look like? And how do you determine which ones are less important? So I want to give you some context a little bit about what we're about to read. We're going to be in Galatians this week. We've been in the Old Testament for four straight weeks with a little bit of New Testament mixed in. We're going to be in Galatians this week, but I want to give you a little bit of the context on what's going on right now. Before Paul starts talking about freedom, because this is, you're going to see in Scripture in a minute ago, he talks about freedom. Before this, there's a big argument and, and kind of a discourse going on about this idea of circumcision okay now if you don't know anything about circumcision it was a law under the new under the old testament it was something that god it wasn't just a law it was the sign it was the evidence of a covenant that god established with abraham and the israelites he gave that to them as a sign of the covenant and therefore all the israelites were supposed to be circumcised it was a way for them to separate themselves from other people and we get into the new testament now where the law itself all of the law has now been fulfilled through the death burial and resurrection of christ and we still see that there are people that are trying to get and to push this idea this law of circumcision on other people as the evidence of following christ okay so they're trying to take not only just an Old Testament law, but a law that was developed under an old covenant and bring it into the New Testament, which is under a new covenant, to try to get people, believers, followers, try to get them to, to enforce this on other people as a sign of evidence that they are true followers of Christ. So this discord went on. They were arguing about it. Paul, you'll see in Galatians, even confronts one of the leaders in the church, Peter, at this, at, during this uh, time. And there was a, a good, pretty decent argument that took place about how this, this, doesn't, this doesn't matter anymore, but if you follow one law, you've got to follow all of them. If that's the standard that you're going to hold yourself to, then you've got to hold yourself to the entire law. And now we get into this, this, this topic where Paul starts to talk about how we're free now because of the, the blood of Christ. 
and the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. So he starts talking about this. Um, so I wanted to make this clear point before we get started. So what does it look like for a free believer to live a life that is evident of their faith? And I want to make that point because circumcision was given as the evidence to a true believer that was disputed. But according to all the questions that we just asked, is it true that there are laws that make life better for a free society? Are there laws as believers that should be a part of our faith that we don't necessarily follow because we have to, but is a part of the structure of our belief? And so... We get into this in Galatians chapter 5, verses 13 through 26. I'm going to read it. It says, You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. If you bite and devour each other, watch out. Or you will be destroyed by each other. It's interesting that in our society, especially nowadays, it seems like that the media and everything is designed to try to play some our identities against each other. And why, in in such a uh, enlightened society? is there so much issues between our skin color, our identity, and our genders, and all this other things like this, you realize that that's all a tactic of the enemy to try to get us to turn and to bite each other so that we can devour each other. Do you see that clearly? Okay, it's it's being played out daily. But it is clearly a tactic. We are free. We are supposed to live free. But Paul directly challenged us to not let that freedom be just some arbitrary thing that we believe in where we can go off and just do anything without any rules, any laws, any structure. Otherwise, that freedom becomes an indulgence of the flesh. So, how do you not, how do you not let freedom become an indulgence of the, of the flesh? Is there something that is like murder? Is there something that is just understood about our faith that helps us operate to where we know what is good, what it isn't? What is right, what is not, what is acceptable, what isn't, what we can discern is bad, what is good? Is there something to this then, a structure, a set of laws, other than the Old Testament that we are supposed to live by? Well, let's look at what he says in verse 16. So I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. Is it that simple? Verse 17, For the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other, so that you are not to do whatever you want. But I'm free. I understand that. Verse 18, But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. So it takes an interesting turn here and he basically says the old testament law if you're if you're led by the spirit you're not under that anymore and again this goes back to the discord that took place before this the 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 scripture that i'm reading about the uh about the old testament laws and circumcision and so on but paul's bringing this to light a little bit and giving a little bit of understanding i'm in the middle of a television series uh let me tell you about it it's called 60 days in you ever heard of it it's actually an older series. I, I, was, I learned about it through uh, my brother-in-law, my sister-in-law. 
and uh, they said it was really, really interesting. So I started watching it, and the whole idea is, is they take normal people like you and I, I guess, that are that are you know living in a free society, and they, and for sixty days they put them in jail. All right, and they basically are trying to, uh, you know, they do this under the 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 the. Uh, the they do this under the, I guess, the assumption that they're trying to make the jail better, and so they they want feedback from these people. What I just think they wanted an interesting re, re, uh, uh, reality television show. I mean, honestly, and, and it is interesting. But so they take them in there, and there one there's one thing, and it, and it doesn't take long. About the first two or three days, you can see it. It happens with everybody that goes in there, as they realize. The very first thing is they are no longer a part of a free society, but they are now slaves to the system. And they tell them that when they go in there. Like, if you commit a crime in there, whatever, you will be held accountable to it as well, just like any other inmate. But they want to get feedback. But it it just becomes truly obvious that when you're placed in that, in in the jail, that there's, there's, there's almost like a different set of rules that people live by. And, and, and you become a part of the system instead of being in, in society, in a free society. Inside, you're a slave to the system. Outside, the system exists, but people follow the rules of society. Inside, you're forced to follow. Outside is freedom. You choose to follow the rules of society. It is not like, which is interesting, so where do those rules come from? If, if, you're, if inside you're kind of a slave to the system, outside you're, you choose to follow the rules so you don't go into the system, where do the rules on the outside come from? And, and why do we choose to follow them? Do we get up every morning and, and study a book called The Rules of Society and then try to live by them? Are they more obvious? Like, how, how is it that you go through your life every day and don't study the laws of our society? Because generally, you kind of understand them. And, and I want to make the contrast and the comparison between the same when it, it's the same when it comes to the Spirit, almost. There is, there is a set of things that are, that are, that are obvious, that are self-evident, that, that comes with the territory whenever you give your life to Christ. You, you, you understand them. And I want to I share them with you um, in verse 19. Just like society, there are acts that are self-evident. And these acts are, are, are pretty obvious. And he lists these things. And I would think that watch when we, when we read over them, you're like, yeah. Like, I agree with that one. Look at 19. The acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, even is thrown in discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissension, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies. I'm glad he pointed that one out. And of the like, I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. Most of those things are, are pretty obvious, right? Like we, we really don't get up, even as believers, every day. And and you know and 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 go over these things like Lord, please help me, you know, not go to an orgy, you know. I mean, I know that's extreme, but we there these are these when you look at it. I'm no, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just being facetious a little bit. But when you look at it, this is where almost every sin spawns from self. You know, what, how does it put it? Selfish ambitions, fits of rage. Like we understand, like we get we get upset with each other. We get upset with people at our job. 
you know, but what do we do about that? Do we just go off on a fit of rage and just let him have it, you know? I mean, these are things that even Paul said is obvious. Now, if those are obvious, are the things that we are supposed to live by the Spirit as obvious as well? Are the, are the, the quote-unquote laws that are to be like self-govern our faith, are those just as obvious as the ones that we're not supposed to break? Or the ones that cause us to go into sin? Well, let's look at it. Verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit, in other words, Paul before said to keep in step with the Holy Spirit to to follow after the Spirit, because when we follow after the Spirit, it, 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 it gratifies our spirit, and we don't, we're not subject to the desires of the flesh. Look at verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness. And you know these. Like, you learn these, if, especially if you've been in church a long time, like, oh yeah, this is the fruit of the Spirit in Scripture. You know, you probably have a song to go along with these if you've been in church long enough. You know, to help you remember them. No. I did my, my singing two weeks ago, I think, and that was it. Whose report will you believe? <laughs> you had to be there. You had to be there for that one. Kindness, goodness, faithfulness. Verse 23 gentleness and i want us to say this last one out loud say it out loud self-control man i don't know about you all the like the love joy peace patience kindness fruit all this other stuff like that it all sounds all good but this is the hard one all right self-control i'm gonna i'm gonna kind of get into this one a little bit verse 24 those who belong to christ okay now we get into the application of it. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking the the in, and provoking and envying each other. So it challenges us. So it's almost like in society, we have these moments like I had this last week where we're reminded that you need to put a seatbelt on. I don't necessarily, does, it doesn't matter, I don't necessarily agree with that law, okay? I think it's one of those laws that is to protect yourself, almost like the motorcycle helmet law. You know, I never agreed with the whole seatbelt law. I think that it's something that you should, you should choose whether or not you put your own stupid seatbelt on. But regardless, it's a law. And at times, we are reminded what these laws are and that they exist and that, we, and that they, are, and they will be enforced, okay? On the other hand, there are, there are laws as believers as well. There are laws when it comes to your faith that you should follow and that it should be a part of your, your everyday walk. And, and most of these laws, just like the laws in society, we self-govern ourselves. We, we don't get up every morning and go, I'm going to make sure not to do this, 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 this. It becomes a part of our lifestyle because we believe in Christ, we follow Christ, and we self-govern ourselves so that whenever we're at work and things do tend to fly off, and I'll give you a good example, man. So this last week, I was 
service in a store. It was my first store. Man, I was ready, dude, to tackle the day. It was a Monday morning. I had got my scripture reading in on the morning. I was I had got two two whole, you know, plans. I was last week during the freeze, I was behind. So I'm doing like two days every day of scripture reading to try to catch up as I'm going through the Bible. So I mean I felt really good about myself, you know, because I'm 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 doing extra this week. And so as I got into my first store, I'm like ready to tackle the day and everything else i've got my word in me the next thing you know i'm i'm like there's a display that i need to put up that's part of the plan i get with the grocery manager and this guy is just such a downer man i deal with him and he's always has a bad attitude he's always very sarcastic he's just one of those people that you would just normally avoid if you just if you could but my job is to get with him to make sure that things are the way they're supposed to be in the store. So I got with him, and he just really didn't make it clear where I was supposed to go. And so I bring in the product, and I got with him, and I'm like, I got with him again, and, and from across the store, not like all the way across the store, but from the freezer aisle to the coffee shelf, he basically yelled, you're replacing community on the, on the front shelves! And this, I'm, I'm a cop right in time for the train and I'm in that store and everybody that's working in that store plus the customers plus my self pride is making noise and everything within me wanted to go okay you know like and you didn't have to be a jerk about it either. You know, I mean, everything. And I'm telling you guys, it seems so simple. But everything within me took to pull myself together and just go do my job. It, and it's self-control. And I'm not trying to brag on myself because the biggest thing that I have a problem with is authority. I mean, I'm pretty good at almost everything. Well, I say that, but I'm not. But... When it comes to authority, like that's my one, that's my one struggle. And it always has been. And it's and it's that self-control because when we look at, let's go ahead and stand as we close today. You know, how do you show a guy like that love? How, how do you how do you show a guy like that joy? You know, how do you show peace? How, how, where does forbearance and kindness come into it when some guy just embarrassed you in front of the entire store? Goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. I want to take you back to what Paul said earlier. For the entire law is fulfilled verse 14 guys for the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one commandment love your neighbor as yourself and it is pretty self-evident as a believer but what we like to do is to take some of the things that we've been challenged with and throw them in the 65 mile an hour category. You know? Like this one's optional. And then we like to take the other ones like that are really important like debauchery or orgery or all those ones that, that Paul listed that are pretty obvious and throw those into the murder category and go, yeah, I'm not doing those. You know? And where do we draw the line? Where at in your faith is your freedom okay to indulge in sin? I want to make sure I didn't get the scripture. I, would have, I wish I would have. But in talking about freedom and meat, Paul said this. Says, everything is permissible, but not everything is... Oh my God, what's that last word? beneficial 
beneficial. So at what level is your freedom a challenge to your faith? And at what level do you struggle with the things that you've kind of written off as, well, I know it's sin, but it's just a white lie. It's just this. It's just this. Paul challenges us that proof of life when it comes to being a true follower of Christ is the evidence isn't in how much scripture you have memorized the evidence isn't in how persuasive you are as a believer the evidence is in the character that you have as you follow God so let us be people that are free who have been set free we are free indeed but yet understand that there are laws. Those laws are beneficial. Those laws are for our good. And even if at times God has to, like Melanie said, discipline us so that we can be reminded that those laws exist, let us challenge ourselves to be the best believer that we can possibly be. And it is a struggle, man. It's an ongoing struggle because there's a, there's a flesh side of you that desires the opposite. It's a battle. It's an ongoing battle. And it's not easy, and I'm not perfect at it. Believe me. Oh my God, if you followed me around all the time. I'm just a human like you are. And I struggle with the same things. But we can challenge ourselves to understand what God desires of us and be better people. So let's pray. Father, this was in no way, shape, or form mean to bring condemnation. Condemnation is from the enemy. It's, it's, a, it's a way of defeating the purpose. I didn't want this to be like that. I wanted to point out, Father, that your desire for us is to be holy like you're holy and in trying to do so and trying to live right we we're gonna struggle because we have to fight the flesh but the way in doing that is to keep in step with the spirit so let us put the Holy Spirit as the forefront of our attitude. Let it bring out the best in us, the joy, the peace, the patience, the forbearance, the self-control when we need it. And I know there are people that struggle with addictions and these things are real. And they fight those things on an ongoing basis. But through your spirit, they can gain self-control over these. So our prayer today is we want to be the best examples as we can. We know that we're not going to be perfect. But our desire is to be. So help us. In our own personal lives, every single individual here has their own things that they struggle with. So Lord, as we approach this new week, help us tame our tongue. Help us find joy in even the things that bring about conflict in our life. Because we realize that we can overcome these things through the power of your Holy Spirit. It is our desire to follow you. It is our desire to want to be better. It's, I think it's the main reason why you call David, King David, a man after your own heart. Because even though King David struggled and did some really bad things, his desire, and it's written throughout all the Psalms, 
His desire was to know your will for his life and do it the best of his ability. That's our desire. So Father, we love you. Continue to open our eyes to the things that we can improve on. Continue to show us the adjustments that we need to make. And by your grace and the power of your Holy Spirit, we will be able to overcome these issues. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God's good. He is good. He is good. He is good. Well, guys, I love y'all. Don't forget all the things going on. There's tons of them. They'll roll on the screen after. By the way, one of the things that we I haven't asked you to do in a while is we have a text message program so that you can get informed about events. And we try to we try to uh, text out like a blast to the church so that you can be informed about when things are coming up. We send out reminders. Honestly, I think this is probably the single most important thing that you can do in order to stay connected because as we send out these text messages, they help you stay informed about what's coming up and they bring out certain reminders about things. So it's really easy. You text that and you'll probably be asked a couple of simple questions, but it's one way that we can blast out a text to you. God bless you guys. And have a great week. We'll see you back next Sunday. Well, at least...